Now if we're sitting here looking directly at a furnace, you have to determine you want the return air coming in from the left hand side into your cavity or do you want it coming in from the right side. This particular one needs to come in from the left side. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a, and I'm going to draw this not to scale and somewhat of an exaggerated so hopefully it'll show up a little better. But we're going to make us a, a return air 90. It's going to come down it's going to go something like this right here. We're going to make this 24 inch total height. That's 24 inch all the way top to bottom. We're going to have flanges on it here that's going to attach to the, or the side of the uh, return air box. We're going to have drive tabs on this right here because that's going to attach to the next fitting up above as it goes up to the return trunk. And then right here we're going to incorporate a filter slot. It's going to have an opening right here that's going to allow a standard 16 by 20 filter to, to slide in. So to finish drawing this, I'll just isometrically just kind of draw it out there a little ways like this right here. Again, not to scale, and I'm drawing off center, so it's kind of kind of boogering up on me there. This will be a top flange here. There's going to be a back flange back there. That's a back flange, and we're going to have a bottom flange here. Haven't decided if there's going to be a flange on the front. I might have the slot directly up against the uh, the metal, or I might reset the slot back about an inch or inch and a quarter and put the slot somewhere in this four inch throat. And that's another thing too. We're going to have a four inch a four inch throat right here before it turns ninety and goes up. So this dimension here is going to end up 16 inches. Nominally, I'd like to leave them 16 and an eighth or so because the filter actually measures like 15 and 7 eighths. But if you leave it 16 and an eighth, it definitely slides in adequately. That's going to be 16 inches in height, and it's going to be 20 inches front to back right there. This is going to end up 9 inches across here. And if you transfer that back to there, it's 20 inches back there. Okay. So we're going to go back to business to land this out and get that thing fabricated. Now if you take a look at the picture, see what we're going to fabricate. This is going to be the left side. I'm going to lay this down here. And if you can visualize the left side, that's exactly what we're going to lay out right here. Return air will come down. It'll turn, go right through the filter and into the air handler. We know that we have to have a quarter inch all the way down and around that heel wrapper. So we're just going to go ahead and lay out a quarter inch. Come all the way across here. Now I know that duct is going to be nine inches wide, so I've got to get me a measurement at nine and a quarter in from the outside edge. Then I've got to add another quarter to it for the uh, for the other quarter inch on that on the toe wrapper. Come down here and make a second set of marks. Here would be nine and a quarter plus a quarter. Now we're going to have a four inch throat on that, so we go to the nine and a quarter inch mark and add four inches to it. That's going to be our four inch throat. Then we want to have a two one half inch added for the double hem. So we have a half inch double hem which requires two half inch marks or one full inch. Double check this. That should be five inches from that inside mark all the way into here. So now we know that 14 and a quarter inches down here should be should be where we need to cut this piece off. So let's go ahead and drop our one inch off of that. And there's a half inch that goes in between them. We know that it's going to be a 16 inch filter. And remember I said I like to have about 16 and an eighth inch. So I'm going to go 16 and one eighth inch up from the quarter inch mark, which is 16 and three eighths inch up from the outside edge. But I'm going to put me a, a mark right there. That's going to be the top of the filter. So we come in 16 and three eighths approximately the four inches. Then we have to add a quarter inch to it up here for the quarter inch that's going to go into the Pittsburgh lock. So we have the rudimentary design or the shape laid out already. So now we're going to connect the dots. Remember I didn't have to measure the height because I'm using 24 inch material and we want this to be a nominal 24 inch piece of duct. It's going to actually be 23 and three quarter 
because we're going to use up that quarter inch down here. But if I connect all of these dots here, there's our basic layout. Nine inches down, turns, 16 inches, four inch throw. So now all we have to do is pick a point here that does not restrict the amount of air. Like you wouldn't want to come up here and go across because that's going to restrict the amount of air coming through. So what you do is just pick out an area down here arbitrarily, like a, a reasonably round number. So let's just see in this general area, we've got about 12 inches. 12 inches is fine because there's a good 10 or 12 inches across here. So that's actually opening up. So I'm going to pick 12 inches here. I picked 12 because it's just easier to add round numbers instead of fractions. So I come in here about seven inches from the rough edge. We're going to connect those two dots. We're going to add a quarter inch at the angle that that line is for the quarter inch that goes into the Pittsburgh lock as it comes around the back side of the heel wrapper. So there's the entire layout right there. I could have brought this down a little bit farther, but if I check right across here to this intersection line here, I can see I've got 10 inches. So I'm 9 up here, and I'm going to open that up to 10 and then drop down to 16. But right now, I'm going to change this because I'd much rather open that up much wider, much quicker. I'm going to drop it down to 15 inches. Okay, I changed that down to 15 inches. Now add the quarter inch to it. Now we can take a look and see how much more we've opened that up. Here's the point right here that it's going to turn and go through. We now have a complete 11 and a half inches right here. So we're coming down 9. We swell to 11 and a half inches as we turn and enter the filter at a much lower velocity. With that 16 by 20 inch filter at a much lower or slower velocity. You can see how you can make adjustments and change while you're laying out. Whenever you see something that's not quite right, you can make a quick adjustment. So hopefully this will help you a little bit. I've highlighted it. Uh, so here it is, 9 up at the top, coming all the way down into the radius, and then exiting or entering the furnace right here through this exit. This is going to house the, the filter slot in just a little bit of time. Now if you look over here, I went ahead and highlighted both sets of marks I made. But you see, here's the first set of marks that I made right here whenever uh, we were making that heel wrapper. And whenever I put my ruler across there, you can see I've only opened it up from nine inches to about nine and a half, about ten, about nine and a half or ten inches. So I dropped that length down to here, and so now we've opened it up about eleven and a half inches or so. So our air velocity as it comes down will begin to slow, and by the time it hits our the uh, the airflow rate across the filter, it won't be going so fast that it's going to suck the dust right through the filter. That's one of the things that's kind of important about the sizing of your return air is you want to make sure that you have the air going slow enough to where the filter can entrap the dust particles. Bear in mind those magic marker marks are not layout marks. I just covered my scribe marks with the magic marker. I'm looking for the shiny scribe line to actual cut, actually cut. Now we're going to notch this properly. We're going to use this as a pattern. This is going to actually become the inside of the rear. So now we have this, we're going to use that as a pattern. That's why it's critical to get all those notches perfect. Turn it inside out. If you don't turn it inside out, you're going to end up with two left sides or two right sides. Hold it very, very, very securely. Now it's a good idea to go ahead and scribe everything on this. Not totally necessary. I'm only doing it now for, uh, for, for your benefit. 
but if you scribe it all, then you'll see for sure where all your bending lines are when you're going over to the brake. This is going to become the front of the furnace, so we have to make provisions now for the filter to go right into here. Your circumference rule is an inch and a quarter, and what I'm going to do on this is come in about three quarters of an inch right here, right here, put my circumference rule on those two marks, mark both sides of the circumference rule, then try to mark reasonably close to the center. This is not necessarily that part doesn't have to be perfect. But now that you've got the center of that marked, cut it. Now we've got to trim this back. That'll come into play here in just a few minutes. I'm cutting that a little deeper than the quarter inch bend. When we get done with it, there's going to be a how about an inch and a sixteenth slot for the filter to slide into. So let's fold these up. Then we'll come back and we'll measure up and make the wrappers. First thing we're going to do is we're going to fold that half inch double hem flange. It's going to be a little awkward. I'm going to try to stay out of the camera view, but it's not going to work too good, I don't think. You can spank that flange, and let me tell you, whenever you whenever you do flatten that down, if you leave it out just a little bit, it puts a little bit of a rounded edge to it. That really makes it a lot stronger. Now, you'll still smash it at some particular point in time, more than likely, but it's nice to start off with a nice reinforced bend. Again, come back here to your one-inch notch. Fold that up and give you your half-inch flange now. half inch flans. We have these inside bends to do, but we're going to do those in a different fashion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slip this all the way through and let this flange hang off the end of that bending bar. Bring it into the quarter inch mark. Take it up with a 90. Come in here to this one. Now when you get your notches just right, you can fold these 90s going around these uh, wrappers like that without crinkling it right here. If you don't get the right angle when you raise this um, raise this bending bar up, it'll crinkle right into the apron. And then you got to straighten that out before you can assemble it. I bump them every now and then. But see like right here, there's no distortion. Had that been cut at a, at a less of an angle, it would be crinkled right there. We're going to do the same thing here. We'll either fold these by hand or we get the cheek bender out. Then we have to fold the drive tabs on on the cleat folder over there. So that's the one full half. This is the one we cut that a little bit off of. So now what we're going to do is that very first thing that we cut right up through the center where I said the filter slot is going to be. We're going to put that in right here. And we're going to bend that over, over a 90. That's going to create a dull edge for that filter to slide into because now you can see how it's going to become the filter slot. Okay, so now on about the business just like we did before. I'm doing this backwards so it is very awkward right here. Pull those drive tabs. Okay, this is the double hem flange. So we'll do that first. Take it all the way over. Turn it over and bend it 90 degrees out. You should always want to fold your double hem flanges to the inside on the first bend to the outside on the second bend. You can do them both. 
Now see, this is where we need to go to the box and pan brake, but I'm going to show you that you can do this. If you notice, I've got this extra 2 inch angle iron here. That's a reinforcing that allows you to bend thicker gauge material without bending the, uh, the apron. But it comes into problem right here because it's on there and I need this to rest off the edge so I can latch that bending bar right down on my line. But I can't do it because this is in there. But I don't want to take it off for something so silly. So I would normally go to the box and pan break, sit that in and pull that. But I'm going to go ahead and try it like this just, just for a heck of it. Again, because this is not really that critical. So I got it latched down there. We'll fold this up beyond 90 degrees. And we got away with it this time. So now we've got a flange that's going to attach to the side of the, the return air box or the side of the furnace. This is the other part of the filter slot that's nice and slick. It won't catch on the filter material and it won't catch on the back of the knuckles when you're changing your filters. So this angle here might give you a different perspective on this, uh, this cleat bender. So we take our where we want the drive tab, slide it right in there. There's a perfect drive tab. So we're down to measuring our wrappers. This is a heel wrapper here. This is going to be a toe wrapper. This is bent to the inside. This is bent to the outside. So if you remember, we had 15 inches to this first mark. So that should be a given. It should be. Uh, 14 inches to the line, 15 inches to the outside edge. So we're going to write 15 down right there. This here should be 7 inches. And then here is the wild card. But if you go from your mark to your mark, you're going to read 11 and a 16th. So let's just call it for the heck of it, 11 inches. So if we add 15, 11, and 7, 8 and 5 is 13, 33 by the width. We know is 20 inches but we have to have a one inch for each edge for the lock farmer, Pittsburgh lock, so 20 plus 2 is 22. So our cut size on this right here is going to be 33 inches by 22. Inside here we have to fold this real quick. I'm just going to fold that by hand. Normally I would get the cheek bender if I had a whole bunch of them to do, but I'm going to do it by hand. Remember those scrap pieces of iron I told you you ought to keep? Now we get our toe wrapper, toe, toe wrapper measurement. We have 4 inch plus the 1 inch. So that's going to be 5. From the 1 inch line down is 6 and a half plus 1. So 7 and 1 half plus 5 is 12 and 1 half by 20 plus 2, so by 22. The first one was 30, 33 inches by 22. So we can go ahead and just use the circumference rule. Give us 33 inches. By 22, so this is 24 inch metal. So we can just come right here and mark a 2 inch mark. Save this, it's going to come into play. So we're going to go ahead and cross break the large section. I'm not going to cross break the rest of them, just the one large section. Then I'll be back for the lock farmer. If I remember right, the cut size on this one was 12 and a half by 22. So let's just go ahead and lay this out 12 and a half by Start off with our Pittsburghs. We know we have to have the one inch here. We got our double hem. 
So you come right down here with your half inch and your one inch. Pittsburgh. Now we've got to lay out our, and that was five inches in, I think. I gotta double check that. Yep, five inches in. Cut our notches. Forgot the uh, S. Make a one inch for the S. We'll start off on the heel wrapper by uh, folding the half inch double hem. Bring that up to the approximate angle you think you're going to need. It's very adjustable as you're assembling it. This should end up a semblance of 90 degrees. That's the heel wrapper. Toe wrapper gets folded opposite. We'll start off with the half inch double hem again. Bear in mind this is the toe wrapper. So it's folded opposite of the heel wrapper. When you assemble these things as multiple pieces, they're floppy, they're flopping all over the place. I've gotten to where I like to use this here as a support. Rest that up on there, then install the toe wrapper first to give me some more secure stability. Don't forget to hang your flange over the outside edge while you're beating down on it from up above. If not, you'll bend that flange back upward. You notice I just put this little strip in here to hold everything secure. We're going to come back to that in just a few minutes. Okay, you can clearly see now from this angle the filter slide. We're going to secure these Pittsburghs in just a few minutes. Don't worry about that. But uh, this is our, our slide for the filter. I've got it. It's about a sixteenth of an inch off in dimension, but that's okay. But now that we've got that, we want to make sure there's no way a filter is going to get hooked or, or, or uh, stuck on it as you install it. So take these guys right here. It's a 30 degree V notcher. I just call them turtle snappers. And right at the edge of that, cut your 30 degree V notch. You can do the same thing on the opposing side. Right in line with where that filter is going to slide in. 
then go ahead and secure. No sharp edges. Nobody's going to get scratched or anything. Your filter is going to slide in and out perfectly. Once you fold those in the 90s, I didn't film it, but I just used tap screws just to go ahead and tap through and put those in there with uh, about an inch and a sixteenth inch and an eighth in between. And if you can see here, I can slide my fingers right in and out. There's absolutely no sharp edge, no anything to catch your fingers, your knuckles, or that filter media because you know how aggravating it is trying to get that filter media out of some of those doggone uh, filter slots. This is going to minimize that entirely. Actually, it's going to just about eliminate it. Now, let me tell you another thing too. Uh, because we had to cut this down to make that filter slot, we only have about three quarters of an inch of that Pittsburgh lock holding this into place to make sure that that doesn't pull out when you're installing and running the screw through the flange. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put one pop rivet at the top and the bottom just to hold and secure this little bitty, this little bitty edge right into that heel wrapper. That's like through all those overlapping thicknesses of that lock farmer or that Pittsburgh lock encompassing that this quarter inch right into it. We'll do one over here and then this thing's pretty much done. Okay to recap here's just another return air 90 with integral filter slot. Okay it's according to our dimensions 9 by 20 with a 16 by 20 opening and again I make those roughly 16 and a quarter 16 and an eighth or 16 and a sixteenth by 20 and an eighth or 20 and a sixteenth thereabouts in order to make it to where the standard filter slides in and out very very easily. Now bear in mind you you can use a 16 by 20 but you can also use a 16 by 22 or 24 whatever the hardware store has available. Uh, it's not like this is a really wild dimension because a lot of a lot of manufacturers have some strange dimensions that just don't seem to be a, a standard size filter and I don't like that at all. That's why I love to incorporate one of these into virtually every install. So there it is. I hope it didn't drag on too long. Hope it didn't try to give you too much information, you know, or anything like that. But the more you do this stuff, the easier it becomes. At any rate, this is the end of this one. And this is Tractor Man 44. And I am out of here, guys.